Hi everybody, this is Lars Vemir and welcome to another Love VFX tutorial. In this video, I'll be talking about a sophisticated grain and noise reduction workflow in Nuke. This video tutorial could not have been possible without the help of a fellow compositor by the name of Liam Gare, who told me about his general denoising workflow for his professional work as a compositor on feature films, which was very interesting. So thank you, Liam, for sharing your knowledge. And in this tutorial, I will try to give you a summary of his approach to denoising your plate. If you are a compositor, I'm pretty sure that you already know how to denoise a plate. But Liam's workflow goes way beyond just opening reduce noise from neat video and doing a handful of clicks to get the job done. Generating a good degrained or denoised version of your plate is very important for things like chroma keying, retouch work, renoising or regraining, CG integration, and much more. For those of you who don't know about the difference between grain and noise, grain is analog and a unique texture that is visible on film stock. Noise is digital and an unwanted signal produced by digital camera sensors. I will talk about denoising instead of degraining because the industry standard tool for this task is reduce noise by neat video. Of course, neat video can handle noise, grain, and much more. Before even starting with the denoising, we have to make sure that the plate we are working on doesn't have negative RGB values because you might run into problems or bad results when trying to denoise a plate that has negative values. You can use the add node to push these negative values above zero. As a rule of thumb, it's always better to get a minimum quality level of 75% from your reduce noise node. A lower quality level will not give you a good enough result when using a regrain method in Nuke that is based on the difference between your plate and your denoised plate. In my eyes, Dust Grain is the best regraining tool for Nuke, and you can download it for free on Nukipedia. You can find the link to Dust Grain and a link to a tutorial about it that I created for Nukipedia in the description of this video. The simplest way of using reduced noise for Nuke is connecting it to your plate, going to its settings, Finding a featureless area in your plate that has some noise, so you can drag out your sample region, click on Auto Profile, and on Apply. But sometimes you just don't have a good enough region to sample your noise from, which makes it very difficult to get your noise reduction quality level over 75%. Before you even start to work with the Reduce Noise node, you can improve the quality of your noise reduction by converting your plate into a log color space or multiplying it up or down, so that more of the noise pattern will be visible and picked up during the noise reduction process. To make sure you get a better result with this method, you should compare the noise reduction output of your modified plate with the noise reduction output of your raw plate to see if this process helps in your case. If the job you will be working on will include a VFX supervisor on set, it might be a good idea to ask him or her to record noise profile plates with all of the lens and camera combinations for your project. Ideally, these noise profile plates should show a big planar featureless surface, be somewhat out of focus so you don't capture any surface details, and a bit underexposed to get good noise samples. These noise profile plates could be shot when the lens distortion grids are being shot. If you don't have access to such material to create an optimal noise reduction result for your shot, and if the plate you're working on doesn't have a featureless area with noise to create a good noise reduction from, I highly recommend that you take a look through other plates that were shot with the same camera and lens combination as the plate you want to denoise until you find the best region to get the best possible noise reduction result from. This might sound obvious, but it's really important to actually do it instead of being okay with a bad denoising result. Another way to enhance your noise reduction with neat videos reduce noise is to use its advanced settings by opening its general settings, going to tools and the upper menu bar and clicking on advanced mode. Then you can change your viewing settings in the bottom under normal and click on Y channel frequencies, which stands for luminance channel frequencies. That will allow you to look at the noise levels in the low, mid, and high frequency ranges. In this view, you can also see the luminance response curve of your noise for the RGB channels. 
which enables you to see if something is wrong with these response curves. As a rule of thumb, these curves should be generally going in a positive slope from left to right. Even though the values might be jumping a bit, they should go in a positive slope from left to right. You can also adjust these response curves a little bit by looking at problematic jumps or dips in these curves, like this jump that I have just created for the sake of this demonstration. Then you can drag your sample region out and move it around until you find this luminance value of the respective channel which is being highlighted with this bold dot. And then we can click on this button in the bottom left corner, which will automatically snap this point of the curve back into its place. These corrections have to be sampled and cannot just be done manually, as they should just be used for minor corrections. If these curves are jumping around too much, you may want to go back to your plates and check if your color space and colors are set up the right way. Now, in the noise filter settings and the spatial tab, you should set your noise reduction amount in the luminance to 80% and in the red and blue chrominance as well as in all of the frequencies to 100%. In some cases, you might turn the luminance noise reduction amount up to 100% too. But you have to make sure that you don't get rid of any detail in your plate by doing that. That is why 80% is usually a very reasonable noise reduction value for the luminance channel. If we take a look at the luminance frequencies, we can see how much of the noise is actually being reduced. You could continue to tweak these chrominance and frequency settings in the bottom under noise level, which could reduce your noise a bit more. But it's best to handle these sliders with care and not go over 30 or below minus 30% to not lose any details in your plate. The number one rule for denoising is you want to remove noise and retain detail as much as you possibly can. Finally, you can tweak the amount of frames in the temporal tab which will change the amount of frames that the reduced noise node will be sampling from. If we set it to 5, it will be sampling 5 frames before and 5 frames after your original sampled frame to get an even better result for your noise reduction process. One thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to lose any details because of the temporal filtering. That's why it's worth to look at your plate up close and play around with the temporal filter amount slider for an optimal result that does not take away any detail in your plate. All right, that was it for this Love VFX tutorial. I really hope you liked it. Don't forget to take a look at my review and tutorial about the awesome regraining tool Das Grain from Fabian Holz on Nukipedia. And again, you can find the link to Das Grain and to my review about it in the description of this video. If you want to see more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe. Again, this is Lars Vemir. Thanks for watching and goodbye everybody.